What's up guys, my name's Eric. Today I'm going to be opening um, most of a booster box. Uh, it has already nine packs removed from it. Um, what I did is I opened them for uh, some other videos. And if you'd like to see that, I will have the links for that down below. Uh, but I figured uh, I'm just going to open the rest of these and just do a video like that. Uh, so yeah, here's... 20, I believe it's 27 packs. Um, we'll just let's take these out and just dive right in. So, yeah, the box has been opened, obviously. Um, I have not done anything with these packs. Um, just I had them for uh, other videos. It was called Pack One, Pick One, where I uh, opened them, laid them out, and discussed uh, top choices for draft. That I would use, but uh, yeah, so I'm just going to flip through the commons and take a quick look at the uncommons. Uh, Fortune's Favor, Somber World Stag, Abundant Maw, and the rarest Stitcher's Graft with Midnight Scavengers, and a Foil Crop Sigil. So that's that one. Okay. I'm hoping for uh, a Tameo. That'd be really nice. Especially if I could pick up a foil one. A foil Tammy would be so nice looking. A Mockery of Nature. Mourn Willow. Markov Crusader. I haven't even seen one of these yet. Lifelink has haste as long as you control another vampire. That's pretty cool. Uh, and Stor Storm Kirk, Strom Kirk. Condemned. Discard a card. Vampires you control. Get plus one, plus one, tell in turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. That's really nice. I like that a lot. And then uh, we have uh, Smoldering Werewolf. Meh. And then a Volder and Pariah. That's cool. Hey, zombie token. The zombies... Oh, star, star. The zombie tokens in this set look really nice. I was uh, rather surprised by that, actually. They just look super nice, you know. Um, that one, that one, not so much. But other zombie tokens that I've seen. Well, we kind of saw the zombie. See, like that one. That one looks really nice. I like that one a lot. Uh, okay, so... Flip through. Fiendbinder is really sweet in draft. Uh, prying Questions. Vexing Scuttler. Faith Unbroken. And a Lupine Prototype. Can't attack a block unless the player has no cards in hand. Okay. Uh, it's actually kind of funny. I saw in a draft. Uh, I opened a pack. My very, the very beginning of the draft. So I picked one card. And then uh, somebody had passed me. Uh, a pack where they did not take the rare. The rare was the prototype. I'm like, yeah, okay, I wouldn't have taken that either. And then I take a card out of there. The third pack I looked at, the third pick of the draft, had another one. That was crazy. I know somebody picked up uh, both of them. Toby. No kitty. No. Uh, so we got Blood Mist, Foul Emissary, Guys to the Archives, and a Mirror Winged Dragon. There's, there's uh, another Mythic out of the box. Mythic I don't care for. It's 5 for 4 or 5 flying, but, you know, other than that, I, mean, I don't care much for his ability. It is kind of cool. Something targets him, then it copies and can target all things. Uh, a player copies that spell for each other creature he or she controls. Yeah, and then each copy targets each one of those creatures. Okay, so here we have Blood Mist, Drug Skull Shieldmate, Dusk Feaster, and a Strom Kirk Occultist, Tangle Claw Werewolf, and these tokens. So that's Mirror Wings of Mythic. Uh, out of this box, I got uh, one Luliana, who is probably the most expensive card by far, and then um, the tree. Tree of Perdition, that's it. Rise from the Grave, Noose Constrictor, Give No Ground, and a Decimator of Provinces, another mythic. And not super excited about that one either. 10 for a 7-7, seven, seven, Emerge, 6, green, green, green. When you cast him, creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2, and gain Trample until turn, and then Trample and Haste. Then we have a Cryptolith Fragment, and behind it, a Foil Imprisoned in the Moon. Not terrible. Not super good. I wouldn't use it outside of draft. Maybe I'll put it in my Xur deck, my Xur EDH. Because um, I can't go get it out of the deck. 
so it's my fourth mythic. I got Prying Questions, Mercurial Geist, Spreading Flames, and Wharf Infiltrator. One blue, one one Skulk. When Wharf Infiltrator deals common damage to a player, you may draw a card if you do discard. When you discard a creature card, you may pay two. If you do, you get a 3-2 Eldrazi token. I've got Curious Homunculus, and behind it, a Foil Falcon Wrath Reaver. Zombie token. See, these zombies just look so much better than recent zombies. That's what I believe, anyway. I don't think that, uh... I don't think that a lot of the zombie tokens look very good, but that's my opinion. So flipping through. We got Rise from the Grave. Weaver of Lightning is so good. Subjugator Angel and an Identity Thief. Uh, two blue blue zero three when it attacks, exile another target non token creature. It becomes a copy of that. Return the exiled creature to the battlefield under its own control at the beginning of the next end step. And then tokens. Alright. So I believe that was my fourth mythic. On average, you get five, I believe. So I'm hoping for Tamio. Haunted Dead, Campaign of Vengeance, Abundant Maw, and Noosegraph Mob. Four black black zero zero comes to play with five plus one counters. When a player casts spell, remove a counter, and you get a two two zombie token, which is okay. Um, I'm definitely gonna be putting it into my zombie. Uh, EDH deck, CDC, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't it's okay. Uh, Shreds of Sanity, Haunted Dead, Dusk Feaster, and Providence. Ooh, and a Bruna. Would have been so much nicer if it was just Sella. Providence, uh, if you have it in your starting hand, you may reveal it. Your opening hand, you your life total becomes, becomes 26. Cast, your life total becomes 26. It's kind of whatever. Bruna, the five... White, white, for 5-7. When it comes to play, return target angel, human creature card from your grave to the battlefield. Flying Vigilance melds with Gisela, and this is the bottom half. Flying First Strike Vigilance, lifelink. Your opponents can't cast spells, and confirm mana cost three or less. I wonder if that means this is a mythic? Probably not, because the front face has rare. So Bruna's probably just considered a rare card. It, it does interest me how the back has a mythic, but the front has a rare. No, I don't know. Bruna's alright. Uh, I'd rather have Gisela, like just about anybody else out there, but, you know, whatever. Alright, so we got Graph Harvest, Peace of Mind, Vexing Scuttler, and Dark Salvation. XX, Black, target player gets X, two, two zombies, and then up to one target creature gets minus one, minus one, until in turn for each zombie that player controls. I like that card. Um... If you can cast it for cheaper amounts and then do a big minus one, minus one, obviously it's great. But I like how you can make zombies and then give something minus one. Put it in a zombie heavy deck, you could just pay a single black to do like minus five. That's really cool. Repel the Abominable, Shreds of Sanity, Clear Shot, and a Nibbles of Frost. Another card I like in draft. Uh, two blue, blue, three flying prowess. Uh, same as a prowess trigger, instant or sorcery, tab target creature, and chill it. And then we got a foil whaling ghoul. Oop. Setting those aside. I'm running out of room for my trayish, my trayish pile. All right. Do 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 do. Haven't seen a lot of murder. All right. Uh, Emrakul's influence. Repel the abominable, chilling grasp, and the tamio that I needed. So nice. Are you over there meowing because you're happy for me, kitty? Are you sad I'm not paying attention to you? Poor Tobes. Such a hard life a cat has. That's very nice. This is the card I needed. Um, and I have not had a lot of success trading for it. So that's very nice. I will be setting that side immediately. And then behind it, we got Curious Humunculus as a foil. All right. Continuing on, that's my fifth mythic out of the box, so I'm pretty sure I'm not going to see another mythic. What is with these cards coming out of the packs nicked already? I mean, I don't care so much about Strange Augmentation, but, you know, you get uh, 
Something valuable next. What if that was Tamio? I'd be pissed. Uh, Nibblegast, Herald, very cool spirit, like it a lot. Slayer's Cleaver, there's a murder I was talking about. And then an Elder Deep Fiend, that's worth something. Cool. I think it's like a $5 rare. It's really nice rare, you know. Uh, I just like Flash and Emerge on the same creature. That's just really good. Get that out of the way. All right. Yeah, Flash, Emerge, uh, and then the Emerge cost gets cheaper for whatever you sacrificed, you know. That, that's what Emerge does. And then it comes in play, you tap up to four permanents. So nice. No, when you cast it. My mistake. I believe I just said when, when it comes into play. It's when you cast it. All right, so here we have Abandoned Reason, Mercurial guys, Spreading Flames, and a Blood Hall Priest. What are you playing with the box? You silly kitty. Blood Hall Priest is really cool. I didn't even read it. Two black, red for 4-4. Four, four. When there's a battlefield or attacks, if you have madness, not madness, uh, hell, if you're hellbent, which is no cards in hand, Blood Hall Priest deals two damage target creature player. Madness, one black, red. I like a Blood Hall Priest. I think it's really cool. I'm definitely going to be, uh, any, any black and red vampires I collect, I'm definitely going to be making a casual vampire deck, but I don't know how, how well it'll do. I don't, I never see... Hey, Toby, stop whining. Jesus. Uh, okay, so, Fury Blade Vampire, Unsubstantiate, Foul Emissary, and then the rare is a Soul Separator. That's a lot of words. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm more interested in that Foil Forest. Hang on a second. I gotta let the little drama queen out. You want out? Come on. Jesus. God. When I'm doing this, I like to keep the doors shut so I'm not I'm not bothering the other people that live here. Um, but uh, yeah, then my cat is a uh, very whiny cat. Door shut. She don't like it. She wants to get out. And I bet in two minutes she'll be clawing at the door to get back in. Here we got Whispers of Emrakul, Fury Blade Vampire, Deranged Whelp, and Deploy the Gay Watch, a sixth mythic. All right, cool. Um, I would prefer it if it was something else, like a uh, just sell it, maybe. Uh, four white, white sorcery. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Put up to two planeswalker cards from among them on the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. And then we have a foil providence. Foil Tammy would be so sweet. Or a Liliana. Foil Liliana would be great because then I could trade it for a Tamio and something else. Actually, I probably wouldn't be able to trade that. Fortune's Favor, Geist Fueled Scarecrow, Courageous Outrider, and a Splendid Reclamation. Tokens. Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to trade a, fo a foil uh, Liliana, because Liliana's my favorite plane clocker. All right. Yep, there she is. She's whining to get back in. <sighs> Cat's so annoying. Thirsting Axe, Blessed Lions. Uh, Drug Skull, Shield Maid, and a Spirit of the Hunt. I like this card a lot. I'm going to make another uh, wolf, werewolf, casual deck. Toby! God damn! Uh, one green, green, three, three, flash. When there's a battlefield, uh, each other creature you control that's a wolf or werewolf gets plus O, plus three until on turn. God. I hate yelling at my cat, but sometimes, you know, just... Pets act up, you know? Uh, Savage Alliance, so nice in draft. News Constrictor, also very nice. Guys of the Archives, and Oath of Liliana. Two and white. I'm looking at the foil behind it. Two and black. Uh, when enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature at the beginning of each end step. If a, if a planeswalker in the battlefield under your control this turn, you get a zombie token. And then foil Dawn Griff. Lunar Force, Advanced Stitch Wing, Give No Ground, and a Summary Dismissal. Cool. Two blue blue, exile all other spells and counter all abilities. This is something I've been looking at for a my band company deck. Um, I've been looking at this because a lot of them will play uh, Ojutai's Command, um, which 
is nice because it has options. You know, you can get something back from the grave. You can uh, counter a creature spell, gain some life, or draw a card. But I like this a lot because of Emrakul. You know, it counters all other spells and counter all abilities, which is cool and all. But uh, Emrakul is just so annoying in standard. Uh, we got Whispers of Emrakul, Lashweed Lurker, Spreading Flames, and a Harmless Offering. That's cool. Look at the little kitty. Harmless Offering. Very cool. I've been wanting to get one of those uh, for a uh, for my Zedru EDH deck for five packs. Um, because, I mean, that's it just fits the theme of Zedru. You, you give stuff away. He's very... Uh, Political and very nice. Give gifts. Uh, we have Ruthless Disposal, Vampire Cutthroat, Ride Down, and a Sanctifier of Souls. I don't think I've seen this one yet. Three white, two three, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control. Oh yeah, plus one, plus one till in a turn. I remember that now because I wanted to get this guy for uh, Gave. And then I realized he doesn't get plus one counters. And I was immediately turned off of him. I didn't even read his other ability. Two white, exile creature card from your graveyard. Put a one white spirit token with flying into play. Alright, fourth to last, we have Nathalia Academy, Markov Crusader, Morn Willow, and Imprisoned in the Moon. Saw a foil one of those earlier. Come on. Third to last, Mockery of Nature. Incendiary Flow, Liliana's Elite, and an Eternal Scourge. I have mixed feelings about this card. It's three, any color at all. For a 3-3, three, three, you may cast it from Exile. Well, that sounds pretty good. Whenever it becomes the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls, exile it. Yeah, it's tough. It, it's tough. I drafted one one time. I didn't even play it. I didn't even want to try. But uh, it looks pretty good, you know. I cast from Exile, you know. Just eats removal like a champion. Guys to the Lonely Vigil, Scout of the Laboratory, Hamlet Captain, and another Spirit of the Hunt. Cool. Get some more of those for that casual deck I'm going to be working on. And the last pack. Do I get my value out of this pack? Sure, I got Liliana and Tamio, but that nah, doesn't make up for a whole box. Okay. Graph Harvest. Oh, saw the card. Peace of Mind, Abundant Maw, and a Spell Queller. And then a Dawson of Perfection is a flip rare. Okay, well that's that's a little, little hard to be upset about getting a spell queller. The price has been going down as just about as quick as it went up. So, you know, it's it's one of those things. But it's still a nice card. Uh, and then the Dawson of Perfection. I'm pretty sure we all know what spell queller does. Dawson of Perfection, 3 blue blue for a 5-4 flying. When you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you get a 1-1 one, one blue human wizard token on the battlefield. Then if you control 3 or more wizards, transform him. He is not a wizard, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. Eldrazi Insect, flying. Wizards you control get plus 2, plus 1, and have flying, which is interesting. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a 1-1 one, one blue human wizard token onto the battlefield. Final iteration. I like that card. That's kind of cool. Uh, it is interesting. It's Five's a little expensive, but I mean, it's a 5-4 flying on its own, so whether you flip him or not, no big deal. And, uh, it draft, you know, doesn't look that bad, seeing as how it's not hard to draft spells, you know. But out of here, I like those. Um, those. I like the art on Oath of Liliana, but I don't think I'll ever end up playing it. To play the Gatewatch is a mythic. Well, psh, I don't care about that mythic. I like Blood Hall Priest, Elder Deep Fiend, mm, Dark Salvation. I don't care about him. I don't care about him. I like that one. Okay, so yeah, not a not a terrible box. Um, Spell Queller is fourteen bucks now. It went up pretty fast, up to 17 or 18, I believe, and then it's going down just as quick. Tamio, I believe, is 15. We'll say that's just 30, I guess. Uh, I don't know what any of these are. And then I got a Liliana, who's currently sitting at about 40. Last I checked, she was anyway. That was a few days ago. So, yeah, and then these. I mean, it's okay. I don't know. Maybe Mirror Wing is worth something. Um, I don't 
I don't think he is though. Uh, Deploy the Gatewatch can't be worth a lot. And uh, same with that Eldrazi. The Decimator of Provinces, I don't think he's worth a lot either. But uh, actually I do kind of care about him, I can use him. Maybe I'll trade him. See if somebody wants it. If nobody wants it, then I'll put it into an EDH deck. So, anyway, that is 75% um, of a booster box. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, unfortunately, my cat had to go and try to interrupt it over and over again. But, yeah, sorry about that. But anyway, yeah, there's most of an Eldritch Moon box. If you enjoyed this video, uh, leave a like. I really appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. Keep me motivated. Keep making videos. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see some more stuff like this. I don't do pack opening too often because uh, it's kind of expensive. And in the end, I'd rather just go buy the singles. But since I already had this box, you know, whatever. Uh, check out Pack One, Pick One, where uh, a couple friends and I will sit around and we'll go through and we'll decide, you know, what looks good in draft and what doesn't. Uh, the first one went on a little long, but, you know, we didn't mean to. We read every single card. But everyone after that will try to keep it about 20, 25 minutes. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time.